After a ruthlessly crowded year for video games, you'd think that I'd be ready to slow down and take a breather. But unfortunately for me, the video game industry rests for no one. 2024 is here, and it's already filling up with new game releases, some of which threaten to be 100-hour affairs that could keep players occupied for an entire year. Oh, great. Hi, I'm Giovanni Colantonio, the gaming section lead here at Digital Trends. And today, I'm officially saying goodbye to 2023 and hello to 2024. And to do that, I'm coming at you with a list of our top 10 most anticipated games of this new year. Now, there's a lot to look forward to in 2024, but it's also gonna be kind of a weird one. We only know about a few big hyped up games coming this year for sure, which is a big change from the AAA heavy 2023. We're expecting that 2024 will bring more of a mix with a few major releases, some niche genre games, and a lot of indie hidden gems. And so we've picked 10 games here that represent that. We didn't just wanna pick all the obvious ones. And so let's jump in and talk about some upcoming games that we're excited about in 2024. Just moving my cat. Now, 2024 is starting out with a bang on January 18th, thanks to Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown. Now, I was already sold on this new Metroidvania from its first trailer this summer. A return to the franchise's 2D roots seemed like a perfect way to revisit the classic series, especially as its Sands of Time remake remains in development limbo. Now, my anticipation would only double after going hands-on with it and finding one of the biggest, most polished Metroidvanias that I've seen yet. Based on the early hours that I've played, The Lost Crown is already shaping up to be a spectacular 2D platformer with varied combat, tons of options content and a massive world to explore. If the full 20 to 25 hour adventure is as good as what I've already played, we may be looking at 2024's first game of the year contender within weeks. Now just one week later on January 26th, we're getting another potential banger in Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth. Now, Yakuza Like a Dragon took me by surprise in 2020. It was actually my first introduction to the wild world of Yakuza, and it would suck me in immediately thanks to its lovable hero, Ishiban Kasuga. Its sequel, Infinite Wealth, promises to deliver even more of what I loved about Kasuga's story with even more emotional weight. Now, with a loaded story about Yakuza protagonist Kazuma Kiryu battling cancer, Infinite Wealth seems poised to deliver an emotional story on top of its winning turn-based combat. It doesn't look like it's skimping on the series' signature silliness either, as the Hawaiian adventure will bring some truly eclectic side content, like a full Animal Crossing-like life simulation mode. Now that RPG hype will continue on February 29th with Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Now, I'll put this plainly, Final Fantasy VII Remake, it's one of my top 10 favorite games of all time. While it might be polarizing, I adore the way it subverts all expectations to deliver a meaningful reimagining about characters and their creators battling their predetermined fates. Now, while I'm not expecting that the much bigger Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is gonna be as thematically focused, I'm more than willing to continue Cloud's unknown journey and see Square Enix's new take on characters like Vincent Valentine. Now, if it can deliver the same balance of playful goofiness and high concept meditations on heady themes, it should be another smash hit. The Nintendo Switch is getting perhaps its last big exclusive on March 22nd with Princess Peach Showtime. Now, it's actually been a really long time since Princess Peach has gotten her own adventure. 2005's Super Princess Peach would try to turn the character into a leading lady, but with, let's say, mixed results. It's far too early to say if Princess Peach Showtime will rectify that awkward moment in Nintendo's history, but it's always exciting whenever Nintendo starts playing around with an entirely new series. All we know so far is that Peach will get an array of costumes that give her different powers, from a sword fighter to a detective. Now, hopefully that idea will build on Nintendo's success with Kirby and make for a kind of fresh franchise her royalty has always deserved. Okay, this next one is really interesting. Tales of Kenzera Zhao launches on April 23rd, and it's worth your attention. Out of everything revealed at this year's Game Awards, Zhao has stuck with me the most. Now that's largely thanks to the passionate introduction that Surgent Games founder Abukabar Salim gave before its debut trailer at the show. 
Salim set the stage for an emotional game built to help him process his grief after his father passed away. Now that alone was enough to pique my interest, but the footage that followed showed what looks like a slick and thrilling 2D action adventure game with a wealth of power-ups to discover. The fact that it also looks to deliver a raw, personal story only makes that pitch much stronger. Now, let's get into some games that don't have exact release dates just yet. Animal Well has been on my radar ever since it was first announced last year. The visually distinct Metroidvania has players exploring a dark, pixelated world full of animals. When I played it at last year's Summer Game Fest, I was instantly drawn in by its mysterious, atmospheric world. What intrigues me most of all, though, is that developer Shared Memory teases that the 2D world is loaded with secrets, some of which it doesn't expect players to find for years after some collaborative sleuthing. If it can live up to that promise, I think you'll be looking at an indie game that gets the same warm reception as last year's Tunic. Now, speaking of indies, I played a lot of games at an in-person Day of the Devs event in December, but there's one I can't stop thinking about. Flock, which launches in spring. The latest game from the folks behind Wilmot's Warehouse feels like it was tailor-made to my interests. It's a nature-watching game where players fly around on the back of a bird and categorize a bunch of goofy critters. It's a mix of 3D adventure and a clever deduction game that has players observing a colorful world and identifying its creatures based on context clues. It seems like the exact kind of relaxing experience that I'm always eager to sit down with come spring. Okay, if it wasn't already clear from the beginning of this video, 2024 is going to be the year of the RPG. And to see that more, look no further than Metaphor Refantasio, which is coming this fall. The new project comes from the creative minds that brought us Persona 3, 4, and 5, which is a strong enough pedigree to get us excited. Now, the gameplay trailers we've seen so far tease a sweeping fantasy story filled with the same stylistic touches that have made modern Persona games such a phenomenon. But even more exciting is that much of it remains kind of a mystery. Its latest trailer includes a host of oddball images from a walking ship to a battle against an egg with legs. Say no more. I'm in. Okay, now here's a left field pick. Llamasoft, the Jeff Minter story. Now, over the last year, developer Digital Eclipse has done something that I never really expected. It perfected the interactive documentary. Both its Atari 50 collection and 2023's fantastic The Making of Karataka have redefined the idea of a video game remaster, finding creative ways to preserve historical context alongside old games. Llamasoft, the Jeff Minter story, is set to take that idea to the next level. The digital documentary will explore the works of developer Jeff Minter, bringing over 40 of his games together in one eclectic package. That'll be bundled with rare archival footage and documentary featurettes that tell the story of a wildly creative artist trying to create in the grips of an industry that isn't kind to outside-the-box thinking. It's an entirely left-field premise for Digital Eclipse's Gold Master series, but one that I cannot wait to check out. And let's end this list with what could be the year's biggest game. If you've yet to play Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice, then you might not realize why Hellblade 2 is such a big deal. The action-adventure game is one of Xbox's finest exclusives, presenting the raw story of a character living with psychosis. It's a challenging work that actively antagonizes players in all the right ways. Now, while it's unclear if Hellblade 2 will take that exact same approach, developer Ninja Theory has proved that it has something special on its hands with the series. The more cinematic sequel should raise the bar for Hellblade with a wider scope and more cinematic storytelling and an improved combat system. My only hope is that it holds on to the same raw exploration of an under-discussed condition that made the first game such a vital work. Now, we only picked 10 games here, but there's a lot more to shout out. We can't wait to brawl in Tekken 8 in just a few weeks. Persona 3 Reload is an RPG remake that I've honestly been dying for. Dragon's Dogma 2 looks like it'll be a breakout sequel. Avowed could be Xbox's next big exclusive. And Star Wars Outlaws should be a spacefaring blast if it actually launches on time. With a release calendar that's only just beginning to fill up, we're clearing out a whole lot of gaming time for 2024 already. 